Blochatelier's principle simply means when stress is applied to a system, the system will shift to reduce the stress. Let's look at some examples of stresses being applied. Look at this reaction. If we remove C or D, or decrease C or D, they both mean the same thing, the reaction will shift right to replace what is being removed. An easy way to remember this is, point at what is being removed. If we add or increase A or B, the reaction will also shift right to consume what is being added. Another easy way to remember this is, don't point at what is being added. So what does a shift right do? A shift right produces more products and in the process consumes more reactants. This means C and D both increase in concentration while A and B decrease in concentration. How I like to remember this is, a shift right points at the products, so the products increase, and it doesn't point at the reactants, so the reactants decrease. If C is a liquid and it is removed, there would be no shift. If A is a solid and it is added, there would still also be no shift. This is because changing the concentrations of solids and liquids have no effect on the equilibrium. The next stress is increasing or decreasing temperature. For endothermic reactions, heat can be treated as a reactant. So if we add heat or increase temperature, the reaction will shift right. Don't point at what is being added. If we remove heat or decrease temperature, the reaction will shift left. Point at what is being removed. So if I asked you, what does a shift left do? A shift left points at the reactants, so the reactants increase, and it doesn't point at the products, so the products decrease. For exothermic reactions, heat can be treated as a product. So if we add heat or increase temperature, the reaction will shift left. Don't point at what is being added. If we remove heat or decrease temperature, the reaction will shift right. Point at what is being removed. And the final stress you need to know is pressure changes. So for pressure changes, we need to look at the total gas moles on the reactant side and the total gas mole on the product side. On the reactant side, A has no coefficient, so it has 1. And on the product side, B and C also have no coefficient, so they are 1. So in total, we have 1 gas mole on the reactant side and 2 gas moles on the product side. If pressure decreases, the reaction will shift right to regain lost pressure as the product side has more gas moles. How I like to remember this is, when pressure decreases, point at the bigger number. It's kind of opposite to what you'd think, because decrease and bigger number don't really go together. Sometimes questions may disguise pressure changes through volume changes. Just remember that volume and pressure are opposites, or as Boyle's Law puts it, they are inversely proportional. So if volume increases, pressure decreases. And if volume decreases, pressure increases. Now, if pressure increased or volume decreased, the reaction would shift left to reduce the extra pressure as the reactant side has less gas moles than the product side. When pressure increases, point at the smaller number. If C somehow magically disappeared from this reaction, the gas moles on the reactant side and the gas moles on the product side would both be equal to 1. This means if we change pressure or volume, there would be no shift because the gas moles are equal on both sides. Let's look at a practice problem. Using this equilibrium reaction, answer the following question. You can try this yourself or work along with me. Predict which way it would shift if NH3 is removed. If NH3 is removed, point at what is being removed. So this is a shift right. If H2 is added, don't point at what is being added. So this is also a shift right. If temperatures increase, don't point at what is being increased. So this is a shift left. If volume is decreased, pressure is increased. So we need to look at the total gas mole on the reactant side and the product side. On the reactant side, there's four, and on the product side, there's two. When pressure increases, point at the smaller number. So this is a shift right. If a catalyst is added, there will be no shift. This is because a catalyst only speeds up the reaction and it doesn't change the concentration of the reactants or the products. Similarly, if an inert gas is added, there will be no shift because an inert gas is not involved in the reaction. If I asked you, does NH3 concentration increase or decrease, to determine this, you need to look at what the shift is pointing at. A shift right points at the products, so the products increase in concentration, and it doesn't point at the reactants, so the reactants decrease in concentration. NH3 is a product, so all shifts right increases the concentration of NH3.
I shift left, points at the reactants, so the reactants increase in concentration, and it doesn't point at the product, so the products decrease in concentration. This means all shifts left decreases NH3's concentration. Catalysts and an inert gas cause no shift, so NH3 will stay the same. This is what I like to call remember notes. It is basically a summary of what you learned in this video, and if you understand and remember everything on this page, you should be able to answer any question dealing with equilibrium shifts or Le Chatelier's principle. So how to determine which way the equilibrium shifts? If the question is adding and removing reactants or products and changing temperature, point at what is being removed, don't point at what is being added. This is how you determine which way it will shift. For questions that deal with changing pressure, pair the total gas moles on the reactant and product side. Pressure decreases, point at the bigger number. Pressure increases, point at the smaller number. It is opposite to what you think. Catalysts, inert gas, adding and removing solids or liquids cause no equilibrium shifts. Shifting right means product concentration increases and reactant concentration decreases. A shift right points at the product side. Shifting left means product concentration decreases and reactant concentration increases. A shift left points at the reactants. At dynamic equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. This is something you may need to know.